<laughs> and welcome to another episode of After Bar Podcast. As usual, I am your host, Mike. And with me today, the dictator himself, Adolf Schilling. Adolf Schilling, that's the, that's the new one. It's Hollywood, it's Jeff. Hey, Jeff. What's up? <laughs> and we are joined in this already disastrous episode. It'll be good, though. Yeah. It's solid so by, far. Yes, it's solid. It's going to be a fun episode. <laughs> <laughs> we have a special guest, not Boston and not yet Goose, Alex from Bells Brewery. Hello, hello. He Great to be here. Our local Bells rep here in Orlando. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of them, at least. Uh, I have Orlando, the greater Orlando area. I go out to New Smyrna, Daytona, and then uh, up to Ocala and over to Lakeland, and that's that's, oh, my, that's my territory. I'm sorry to hear. That's a big territory. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's decent. There are definitely people that have larger territories, so I'm thankful that I got this area and whatnot. Right. Makes it manageable, and it's cool. Mixes it up a little bit. So, cool. I mean, better than having the state. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. That's pretty stressful. There's I no would way. imagine. I heard. I heard that you got to do a ton, a ton of work. So, <laughs> so we got we got Jeff and Alex rocking their shades. Yes. Wait, what's with you and not wearing shades? Uh, I can get you a pair of shades. I, mean, I have a hundred. Sure. sure, I'll take one. Well, All right. Jeff, do you wear hats? I, occasionally, I like wearing a backwards hat with sunglasses so I can look oh. like a real douche when it's like, oh, the sun. I could block it with my hat. Yeah. But I'd rather wear sunglasses. Yeah. You got like so. sensitive. He doesn't neck. want to mess up the hair either. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you get you get a uh, you get one of these so you can see the the hair through the whatever yeah. that's called like yeah, a, a snapback so you can see through the thing. Yeah. Trucker it's a trucker hat. hat. Yeah. So I wear those. It's my natty bow hat. A hundred percent beer hats. Uh, yeah. I don't own any other hats anymore. It's really weird when you go golfing and you try to look like nice and you put on a nice polo and then you're wearing like a beer hat and you have a big beard. Uh-huh. And you just look like a schmuck instantly. Nobody assumes that you know the what you're doing. Stereotype. Yeah. yeah. They're like, look at this fucking kid. Yeah. So what's your what's your best douchiest golf hat? Uh, I have your a, light. I have a red, funky Buddha hat that's bright red, and white. It's a trucker hat, and it's white with red front. Just loud. And it's yeah, it's not pretty douchey, obnoxious. It's not and douchey. I usually wear it with my Tiger Woods red polo, so I just am all red. <laughs> <laughs> like or, a, or Mario. What, what, yeah. are you, what are you really going for? It's like a little cherry popsicle. It's like a, a girl just a girl just had that time of the month all over me. <laughs> that was oh. too far. Did I do I went too far? That's too far. That was that was the line. A little too far. So we know where the line is. Now, I you, mean, you, didn't go, you didn't go no, way yeah. past it. You like kind of like dipped your toe in the water. I haven't hit the line before. No, I mean, if you had like oh, the, wow. the red Kool-Aid smile or like the Joker smile, that's mm-hmm. taking it too far. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, though. Okay, good. <laughs> no. Because okay. that would have been inappropriate. Yeah. So, Jeff, what's our, what's our first half topic here? We're talking about Bell's Brewery with the man himself. <laughs> Mr. Bell's. Mr. Bell's. I don't want to take that title. <laughs> <laughs> I've met I've met I've met a couple of great people with their last name Bell, and I cannot sit in that that, that same seat. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bell's. <laughs> yes. Ring and but ding, yeah, ding, we uh, we're here. We're talking about the the new release of Oatsmobile, but I guess it's not really that new anymore. It's been out for a couple couple weeks. A couple weeks, but I mean, it, it's pretty new. Uh, we had a lot of uh, package go out very quickly, and we're just kind of cycling through drafts. So. Any total wine is going to have a bunch of it, maybe some independent stores and whatnot, but definitely look for it on draft moving forward for sure. Like but it is at World of Beer UCF right now. It is at World of Beer UCF at this moment in time. So Shameless plug. <laughs> we don't do plug it anywhere anymore. I got to. So we right. have to plug it anywhere. Right. Yeah, exactly. So when did you start working for Bells? <laughs> so I started working for Bells uh, late January of this year. Uh, I got to go up and train at the brewery for a week, which was fantastic. Got to see every uh, every aspect of the whole thing, down to people that do the digital media print, that make the labels, that package the beer, to see the brewers and meet those people. And it's really cool to see kind of the whole entire process and then where I kind of fit in that being, you know, kind of a remote piece for, right. uh, for yeah. Bells down in Florida. So, How is it like being in Kalamazoo? Because, I mean, that's that's far. Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo is far, and I did go there at a pretty cold time. I, I guess that the week that we went up there to train, uh, it was it was in its in the 40s and 50s, which was extremely mild and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. There was like a snow flurry for about 20 minutes on one day, and then that was about it. But nah, you're not. That's not like near the teams. lake, right? You're not. Uh, you're not near the water in Kalamazoo. Well, Kalamazoo is actually right here uh, on the mitten. So like, he's pointing to his hand. Yeah, exactly. His right so, hand. 
So, yeah. <laughs> it's right here. It's right, it's right there. Well, it's a mitten, so that's a good, that's a yeah. good use of, of hand. Of the hand, it's a good yeah, hand. exactly. And uh, so, yeah, closer to Lake Michigan, so there's that aspect. A little bit of breeze. I'm not, I'm not, the, I, I don't know so much about the, the climate, you know, in, in Kalamazoo, but. So, you went there, you trained, the mm-hmm. whole shebang. Yep. What's one thing that you didn't know that you ended up finding out when you went up there? Uh, so we have two brew houses. We have a 50 barrel brew house and then a 200 barrel brew house. And our 50 barrel brew house was actually uh, Wolfgang Puck tried to create a brewery and stuff like that. And we actually, when that didn't happen, we bought that on, from uh, <laughs> sloppy as hell. <laughs> Don't you know your portions? I suck. But yeah, we, uh, so you heard it here first. There was Jeff sucks. <laughs> oh, I think I proved that on the last episode. No, we didn't. It's not. <laughs> well, now we've proven okay. it. The glove does fit. <laughs> the mitten. The mitten fits. <laughs> the mitten, yeah. But yeah, so we bought, a, we bought our brew house from Wolfgang Puck, which I thought was crazy because I didn't even know that that was a thing. You would think he'd be able to make some good beer. He makes delicious food. Delicious food. Would he call his beer What the Puck? Damn. Just an idea. That would be something. Yeah. His you guys, should, sure you guys should make a yeah. beer called What the Puck and brew it at the Wolfgang Puck brew yeah. house that you bought. Right. And it'd be... Good history. Yeah, a Belgian style. <laughs> and also and also Canadians will love it because yeah. they like hockey. Yeah. I think it's a win-win-win. Yeah. Some Americans like hockey, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right now, Tampa, they've been doing... America is like playoff hockey. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Eighty-five percent of the people who like hockey. Well, we're like, also in Florida. Florida, Florida is a huge contributor. It was a yeah. huge. When I lived in Michigan for a little bit, like it, everyone was definitely into it. So. So you said Wolfgang Puck was the thing you you didn't know, but you end up knowing after you went up there. Yeah, yeah. That's I thought cool. it was cool that's that like we just didn't. It was used equipment for sure, but I don't know. It was kind of nuts that but that was one of the things that you know we have. And then just there, there's a bunch of other things with the new brew house that we got going on that is that's pretty fantastic. Like I, it was really cool to see how involved in sustainability and green and stuff like that we were doing, like repurposing heat to warm up our water to make sure that you know we didn't have to go from cold water to whatever. We were just like reusing all the, the BTU. Yeah, I mean it's got to it's got to be like a new, new like issues with everywhere that you brew like if you brew in florida that's probably about repurposing power to cool to cool your water to make it yeah. you know like it's just funny how that's kind of like a thing where you have to overcome the elements yeah like like this uh the hellas story with cigar city where it's 117 degrees in the warehouse and they were brewing it oh damn and they said it's hotter than hell so that's why they named it it's hotter than hell is there we go like it's just funny stories hmm. like that i know the yingling facility doesn't have ac in, in the one in Tampa, they just have, like, fans up low, air around. Just, like, a big-ass fan? Yeah. In the brewery? Yeah. They must have, like, some kind of chilling method, though. Not when I went on tour. <laughs> There's a... <laughs> Maybe the I tanks. do not want to work there for 12 hours a shift, six days oh, a week, yeah, working the, in the yeah, fucking Yeah, working there would suck. Yeah, in no Florida, way. yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a warehouse somewhere in Orlando, like, near downtown, and it just says Big Ass Inc., Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, but it's just, it's a big ass fan warehouse. Big ass fans, yeah. But it says big, ha- big ass ink. And we're like, what the hell is big ass? Like, what, what, com- what company is this? <laughs> but then we realized what it was. What a badass name for a company, though. Just like, big ass fans. Big ass fans. <laughs> I mean, you can have a whole, like, company, just big ass. What, yeah, whatever the next thing big is. Big ass yeah. beers, big yeah. ass. Dude, big brewing. ass beers. We only do bombers. Yeah, we like the brewery. Yeah, pretty much. Making some fantastic beer. So, I don't know if you listen to, well, I do know you've listened to it, but you listened to uh, the last couple episodes, and have you heard of Jeff's Beerginity with Bells? No. You want to tell him about your Beerginity? Beerginity. Your craft Beerginity? I just Bell, literally made that up on Bell's the fly. Bells Oberon? Yeah. Being my first craft beer? Okay. That is, actually. And it was actually here. Really? At World of Beer Yourself. Before I worked here, like way before I worked here. Yeah. I was like a sophomore, I guess, or I don't know, whenever you turn 21. And uh, I came in and was like, I like Bud Light. And they're like, all right, I have an Oberon now. I was like, all right. <laughs> you were that guy. This is, yeah, okay, cool. Well, I, I think we, 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 we trained for Natty. weeks for you people. <laughs> yeah, okay, and cool, I, yeah. Uh, 
I had Oberon and it was freaking. <laughs> it was like, but you know what? Then they were like, oh, it's like Blue Moon. And I'm like, oh, okay, I like Blue Moon too. And I, I tried uh, Oberon and I was like, this is nothing like Blue Moon. It's so much better than Blue Moon. Yes. Because like Blue Moon is like cheesy, fake orange tasting. And like Oberon is a hint of citrus, but like a lot of just like a solid wheat beer all the way through. And I, Solid wheat beer. I really solid liked flavors. it. So that was my first craft beer. That's when I started drinking craft beer. I like that. That's a really cool story. Those kind of things like really get me stoked. Like that's one. That's Everything one thing gets with you this. stoked, though. I know, man. It does. You're just like I'm, the I'm most. Always smiling. You're like the most <laughs> excited person about everything. Like you called me. Alki calls me the other day, and he's like, "Hey, man, like, I want to get you know go on the podcast and stuff." I'm like, "Yeah." So what do you say? He's like, "Driving out to Lakeland, man. We're gonna go out. We're gonna do all this." He's like so excited. I'm like, "Yeah." Is there like a lot of bars there? He's like, "Not really, but we're just we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do a big." So, exactly. Just so excited, like it's it's contagious. And that's what I mean. This, that's what this job has, has brought me, to be honest. Like just being fortunate enough, fortunate to be in the, this position. It, it's it's crazy. It's. The whole culture, everything around it, having stories like that. Like, we've been around for 30 years now, so, it, like, there's a lot yeah. of people that have, like, oh, you know, here's my Larry Bell story, here's a picture or something like that. And I, that's something I always try to ask because being new myself, like, it's kind of cool to see, you know, people who, you know, experienced Bells, you know, 10 years ago or well, whatever, or how long they've been drinking. Yeah, it. well, like, um, when we went over to Coasters, Mac was on the show with us at the Coasters one. Yeah. And, uh, so, big, Mac. Big uh, Belgian fan, I mean, beer beer connoisseur and knows everything you could know about every kind of beer and hop and everything he was bff with uh, michael jackson the beer really? writer yeah, yeah. and yeah. he went uh he That's went awesome. after the show and he goes up oh, time to get old reliable and got a bell's too hearted and his he goes i always drink bell's too hearted when i come here that's awesome and it's just it's funny that it's that. like that kind of stuff but that is it's like a, it's like a great entry level but also every man's ipa that you can continue drinking no matter how much you appreciate beer yeah I think that's what, I guess, we could go into it. I guess that's what makes Bell's really, like, a, a monster in a good way in the market is that, you know, you, they don't, I haven't had anything, like, crazy, like a Chalk Lobster or anything like Dogfish Head-esque, mm -hmm. but the beers they make, like, perfect the style they're brewing for. Yeah. So, like, you ask anyone who's been in craft beer, hey, have you had a, a Two-Hearted? Boom. They smile, and they always say, dude, that's one of the best IPAs you can get anywhere. Exactly. Not just Florida, like, you know, High Lies good, but High Lies very limited. Too hard to get anywhere. Yeah. You know, the Oberon is, like, one of, the, like, probably the top ten wheat beers that you can get anywhere, wherever you go. Right. And it's and it's crazy the, the we only are in half the, the U.S. or in 20 yeah, just gonna ask, 30 yeah. by 30 by the end of the year. I assumed. And, uh, and, 30 but states, but anywhere. Is, but, it, yeah. <laughs> but it is crazy that, that there is such a following and stuff, and people have that recognition of, of those brands. And it's, I mean, they're solid. And, that, and that's, like, that's another thing that, that makes my job easy is I, I don't have to lie about my beer. Like, I could be the figurehead, and I can do all that stuff and be stoked. But when and, you taste it, it's like, all right, cool, this guy's not And bullshit. from former like, product managers of World of Beer, you know how many people have to lie about their beer. Yeah. And it's like, I give them credit. Good for you. Uh, uh, like, I, I appreciate when it. When I was doing product, man, there was so many times people would just tell me how pumped they were about a beer. And I'm just like, man, I don't feel your enthusiasm for that. I know, but, but you got to give it to you, them. You <laughs> they, get, and cause, it comes man. down to like how happy <laughs> and how pumped they are. And I'm like, you know what? You're, I'll, I'll support it. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And, and that's but, what it is sometimes too, you know? And then a lot of, I mean, I feel like a lot of breweries, especially ones that are opening up, you know, there is a transition time where you're kind of figuring out your own stuff and, uh, but then I, there are, there are, there are all sorts of situations and everything. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, all of our all of our friends who like were either with Wob and then went into distribution or went, you know, the people who who we've had good relationship with Carlos from Ballast Point. It so seems Carlos. like everybody who who gets into something finds a brewery where they don't have to lie about their beer, which I freaking right. love because it's like like Derek with Dogfish Head, amazing brewery that's Absolutely. awesome for him and it couldn't happen to a better person and then Carlos with Ballast Point, like you guys have it easy. You actually get to enjoy your beer. We, and it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, you know, there's people who are like, oh, I only get to drink this when I go out. And it's like, I right. get to drink this every time I go out. I know, out. and that's and that's one of the things. Like, I'll go in and I'll order a Two-Hearted or I'll order an Oberon. And it's like, it's like, oh, man, like, do you, do you have to drink Bells because you work for Bells? I'm like, I'm like, no, but, like, you can't fuck with Two-Hearted, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Two-Hearted, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I like, but that's, that's one thing that I've now realized. I was watching ESPN. And I was like, these sportscasters, like, they know, like, these are the top dogs of, of the profession of being announcers and stuff like that. But they have to know everything about everything. 
You know, and, and I'm like thinking, I'm like, I'm learning as much as I can about bells and whatnot. But at the end of the day, if I don't know how to talk about what's really out in the market, then, you know, then I'm not a well-rounded, you know. Yeah, like I mean, you need to know like what that, you have so. that competes with what everybody exactly. else has and, and why yours is better. So it is, yeah, it's, I never even thought about that, but that's got to be a good challenge. Yeah, so if you're like constantly immersed in what you're that. doing, but then mm -hmm. you have to know what everybody else is doing too. Exactly. And I feel like a lot of Bell's beers are like people's like, go-tos are like their backups right so you go to a bar and like some people may you know go and get bell's beer or some people are like you know what? i haven't had beer a and they try beer no nah, i don't like that ipa or, or brown or whatever i'll get an expedition or i'll right. get they, they either buy bells initially or they fall back to it right exactly and that and that's the kind of thing that that we that we pride ourselves on is just having quality products you know, for the most part, like we try to balance all of our, our beers and not too crazy in any direction or anything like that so that, you know, it is approachable and it is a fallback and that you know that every time you drink too hearted, you're getting the same exact Well, beer. yeah, it's actually now that you brought that up because I never even thought about it, how much I've done this like subconsciously. But like I've compared beers to your beers as far as like taste wise goes. Like whenever I when I was selling beers at Altima, I remember we had on a brown ale. I don't remember what it was, but I was like, yeah, it's actually pretty good. It's almost as good as Bell's Best Brown. And, like, yeah. you know, like, all your core beers are so, like, known and, and, and stable as, like, a high-end offering from that style that, like, you can pair against those because everybody knows what they taste like. And it's really, like, too hard at Oberon, Bell's Best Brown, all are up there doing and They're that. almost, like, like vintage in a way. Like, you know, you like, you like trying other things, but, man, when you see that vintage – that jerseys or whatever, like, damn, I love that shit, man. <laughs> You're driving around in a Mustang, but you see, like, a, an old, like, 67 Mustang, like, fuck. Damn. That's a nice-ass fucking car, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. what I Like, that's what Bell's is to me, like, you know, it's just, you can never let go. Yeah, like, oh, when, when you find a 2013 Expedition Stout sitting in a, <laughs> oh. in a cooler somewhere and you pick that shit up. Yeah, then you mentioned it to your buddy. He's like, no, nah, I'll get that $24 brew dog Tokyo. <laughs> That's like three times the price. Well, <laughs> we had different tabs. Not like I, it's not like I fucked you over. Like, no, you didn't. <laughs> like, we, we, and if anything, I helped you because you were like, I want that beer. And I could have just been like, no, I want that beer. But I didn't. I took, it, I took a different one. A, ge a gentleman is, is what this man yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. And I paid He's more lying. for it. He's lying. <laughs> You made that decision when I was blowing up the toilet in the bathroom. <laughs> so I don't Whatever. So, Alex. Yes, sir. What's your favorite Bell, Bell's beer? My favorite Bell's beer is the Oracle. 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 Yeah. So, uh, if does it come with Master Chief? With Master Chief, no. no. <laughs> but no, you just become Master Chief <laughs> okay. after drinking it. You drink you like say, two or three of them, you think you're <laughs> And you're just lit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then you're uh, jumping around sword fight fighting people. <laughs> <laughs> Tea bagging everybody. <laughs> sword, sword fighting people, Mike. Yeah. Is, that, is that where we're going? Okay. <laughs> I don't you know. You this, saw Jeff smile, right? This, yeah. this, this podcast, she's she's this podcast will come off the rails eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it did before we even started. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a little oh, yeah. wobbly on this whole thing right now. I already forgot the most intro. accurate intro I ever said. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fucking disaster. <laughs> so it's the Oracle. The or so if if Hop Slam is the big juicy double IPA, the Oracle is its counterpart and being the big bitter dry uh, hoppy uh, double that we make that comes out at the end of summer. Uh, we're hopefully getting some more down in Florida now. Uh, I've never heard of it. Draft and package. Yeah, it's super yeah. limited. I mean, if they do, if it does come down, it's a. Uh, it's like not a ton of kegs. It's not going to a lot of places. And are the pla are the planets beer. still coming out? Or are they done? Planets was just a one time shot. Um, that was last year. And this year we're calling it like a big hop series kind of thing that we got going on. Um, hop slams in that. Obviously, we got Hop Solution coming out, which is uh, another double IPA that we do. Tropical fruit on the nose, like a nice bomb of it, and then uh, the malt we pump up, so it's nice, like rounded, you know, some toffee caramel notes and like a little bit more depth of flavor, yeah. almost like more, uh, you know, getting into that amber kind of thing. Oracle, and then uh, Roundhouse, which is our Imperial Red Ale, which is fire. That's Imperial amazing. Reds are awesome. I said that in a Dude. in a podcast. I don't remember if it was on the a podcast, while ago. Or not, but yeah, they're like ago. such a uh, underrated and underproduced style because I Absolutely. freaking love Imperial Reds. Every single one of them yeah. I've had, I've been like blown away by and nobody really makes them. 
I, I'm, I'm definitely into them. Like, it's always been a style that I truly appreciate. Just, like, and, super hoppy. Yeah, red and, IPAs, too. I like red mm -hmm. IPAs. Like, somewhere in between an amber and an IPA, I'm cool with. You like a Ripa? A Ripa. Ripa. Kelly Ripas. Yeah. You like Ripas? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Alki brought in the a little a little surprise for us. Yes, I did. So what? Tell us what you uh, is this it here? That's it. All right. That's it. Tell us what you brought. Well it's hot. What you brought the uh, the show? So uh, we have released a new core beer. It is called Oatsmobile. It is a uh, dry rushing, hop dry hop session pale ale it. made with oats. So uh, on the nose you'll get uh, super tropical fruit peach. Uh, you can pretty much plug any fruit flavors into that. Uh, get some citrus in there. Uh, and then we uh, do a full malt bill. We don't put any adjuncts or anything like that in it. So that, I mean, even looking at it, the color is, you know, like a little bit more deep for only being 4.3%. Really? Yeah. Okay. And uh, and with that, we, we put oats in it. And that's kind of what sets this session beer apart from uh, from other ones is sometimes they get a little light and thin. This one, because of the oats in there, as well as the full malt bill, you know, leaves like a nice, like silky, not silky, but like creamy, uh, velvety mouthfeel and a little bit more thicker body, which is uh, yeah. which is different than, you know. And this is, you said this is a single IPA? No, it's, it's session a pale ale. Ale. session pale, I'm sorry. Yep, no, you're good. You know what this reminds me of? And I I had it, I, well, I just tried it. I smelt it, and I was like, this sounds, that sounds, smells a lot. It rem reminded me of Heady Topper. Okay. How it's like tropical. Tropical, Pretty yeah. much plug any fruit, you'll probably pick it up. And then I tasted it, and it tasted very similar to a Hetty Topper. Okay. On my palate. It's a little bit warm, but I pick, it's super tropical. It's light. It's crisp. 4.3%, right? Yeah. Like, it doesn't taste like a pale ale to me. It just tastes like... Well, that's that's what it, a I, tropical. It tasted I I, I was because you you went into the well one. It's called Oatsmobile, so I thought you know the oats and the and the malt build was going to be the premium like what your your flavor gets. But I actually got a lot of the hops. Yeah. And um, it's floral, very floral and very, very floral. like oh, on yeah. your nose, but a pungent um, hop aroma. Yeah, and you get a lot of you get a lot of hops, but it doesn't leave a bitter finish in your mouth either, which and is like that malt backbone comes through in the finish to to make it. And it is light. It's. I mean, that's what you're gonna get when you make a, a session beer. It is a light bodied, but sure. Not in like a lagery, like. A, oh no! Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just not yeah. thin. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like it's, it's not got, thin. It's, exactly. It's a little coating. You know. It is silky, zone. like you said. Silky, yeah. Which, Which is, is cool because like. Interesting. Yeah. And I think that that's maybe what's also lifting some of that like the hot. Is that a Pringles hat? Going. It's my natty <laughs> bow hat. National <laughs> Bohemian. Maryland bitch. It looks uh, like a. It looks like a. Pringles. Pringles. It looks like you had two it, eyeballs, but then one just like a sticker. Look, look fell it up, Na National Bohemian or Natty Bo. I think it's. Look it up. I think I'm that that looks up. like uh, the Pringles guy is missing an eye. Yeah, Listen, definitely that. Jeff, you can't make don't don't shit on me. I'm not. Hey, you decided yeah, to turn your hat around from backwards yeah. to forwards. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, the sun's in my eyes. You should have some sunglasses. You should, yeah, yep. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, if, you were, if you're on Fuck. the same page as us. <laughs> and that's why I was asking, do you wear hats, Jeff? Because I, I can't wear one. And that's why I have sunglasses because to I me, just always the thing sunglasses. on the head is, is it's 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 a functionality thing. If I'm wearing a hat, it's to keep the sun out of my damn eyes because I don't have sunglasses. Even then, it's hard for me. You see, if I wear a hat, it's not always a functionality thing, but I really don't like them because then you have to look down to shade your eyes. Right. You know, because like other, if you're looking up, the hat doesn't uh, do anything to you. Unless right, you're next a week goober I'll wear, and like I'll wear you bring us. it all the way down, which that's I'll totally wear my, cool. uh, my He flat bills them. I don't know what a flat bill does. If, he, if it's not getting your perifs. So it's circu or surface Listen, area. bro, no, I'm a busy area. guy, okay? I don't have time to curve my hats. Uh, is that just like a natural a curve that you got going on? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I like that. I over, I played hat, baseball. I over curve my hats. My hats are like a freaking, they're like an igloo. Do you guys I, play I have a show to make here, all right? I used to. What? So, so my buddy is, is uh, he does softball every Sunday. And it's just like fun. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. It's literally. It's not like a league. It's just like more everyone's fun. getting together and just drinking and softballing. Uh, do a league. It's even more fun. You right. talk shit to everybody and stuff. Not sure. Bo, dog. I don't know what that is. It's a, uh, it's a, it's made by Paps. You can only get it like. Oh, it's a beer. It's a beer. You can only get oh. it in like the Maryland area. That's so hipster of you, it's bro. It's like it's that beer is more hipster than Blue Ribbon. Yeah, that's how I just said it. It's so hipster yeah. of you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and their slogan is "Oh boy, what a beer." Oh boy, what a beer. 
<laughs> All right, I kind of like about, him. About one eye. Yeah, what's the story with Almost the, looks the like one Darren eye. if Darren had one eye. I have to give Darren a haircut or the house. today. That could, yeah. yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Darren's entrusting me to cut his curly ass hair. I don't know what to do. Uh, not cut his hair. <laughs> I are cut my gonna, own hair. Are you going to do the scissors or are you going to. You don't cut your own you hair. Gonna, I cut my own hair. I cut my own hair yesterday. Shows. Did you really? Yeah. It looks good, man. Thanks. I appreciate I it. I went to Floyd's and I was like, I got a lot of hair. Can we Floyd fix seems so like cool. Ah, you must make good money from Bells. <laughs> 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 Floyd's is cool. I it like want to go tight. there. I was like, I was like, I want a true <laughs> barbershop experience. You know what I mean? Like, but I don't want to go to like the sketchy ones that I drive by every day. You know, we're plugging it. We're plugging Floyd's. We're plugging Floyd's. The Lakeland uh, barbershops. Is that what it is? No, no, it's too too redneck. For that uh, okay. there. I've only been to one barbershop in my life. And Seriously? Literally, my hometown barbershop is the only people that I like cut my hair besides myself. I haven't, I haven't paid for a haircut in like seven years. Is it me or is it the older I get, the more therapeutic getting a haircut is? Uh, I just cut my own it's hair. It takes me like ten minutes. No, like, there, no I like so, legit I usually fall go, asleep. <laughs> I go to sports clips and I'm like, I'm, do I want the triple play package or what? I'm like, yeah, dude, massage my shit. Like, <laughs> my, I, this, is my, this is my escape. This is my zen time. Maybe uh, I got to start getting haircuts again. I just don't dude, trust I anybody. Thoroughly, like I, I really enjoy like, getting my haircut. Zoom, 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 yeah, right, right. It. like I'm not trying to like. I might get I'm rid of this like Hitler Youth haircut like you. and go to like a, just a shaved head, and then I can start getting haircuts at a real just place. Just leave the top the same length and shave the sides. That, that would probably that's what I did like for that. Halloween. I mean, I have yeah, a style in mind yet. But, but with that hair, with the the product in there and stuff, that would look intense. It'd be the Hitler Youth hair, right? I should just grow it I out. I mean, you're already halfway there anyway. I do the minus the hair. Do the man bun and then shave the uh, the rest and skin get the, uh, the and do exactly mustache. like I did. Uh, that's what I did for Halloween. Oh, so you should be. Sweet. You're saying you want to be you want to be that guy for Halloween? Ragnar Lothbrok, bro. Oh, oh, I thought uh, you meant. I thought yeah, you meant dude, uh, I can't be Ragnar again though. So I started watching it. Got through over a season. It's amazing, but it, then it, I, I kind of stopped watching it, unfortunately. It's getting, it's coming off the rails a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about Vikings, by the way, for all the listeners. Yeah. The show Vikings on history. It's awesome. Watch I'm it. I'm trying to, like, do they drink beer in that? They have to. They drink, like. So we can wrap this back around in ale. Now, I guess. Ale. But they don't determine what ale or That's what good. kind. It's probably barley wines. Meads. <laughs> it's just meads. Maybe just they're meads. drinking IPAs. Probably. Yeah. I think they were drinking Hedy's or, over. Uh, Valor 3. <laughs> <laughs> Valor 3. They actually probably were drinking whale ball beer. If there was anybody uh, who'd be drinking it. All right, back to what we were talking about. Back to about. Bells, yeah. yeah. What so, the fuck um, is going on here? I, I really like this beer Tangents. a lot. Thank you. I, I was skeptical. Pale Ales is it my... Off. God damn it, Jeff. I swear to God. July 1st can't come soon enough. I'm balding because of your ass. I know. When I got my haircut the other day, I saw gray hair. I was like, oh, fuck. It's because of Jeff. Yeah. Stressed me out by this mic shit. <laughs> this mic shit. Because you don't know what it's like recording an entire episode and realizing something was wrong the whole time. Right. <laughs> well, I do know what it's like. We, had, we lost half of an entire episode due to camera malfunctions one time. Oh, um, um, yeah. And then, well, not, well, I'm not getting into that. That's a sour subject. <laughs> very, so, very um, sour. Pale Ale, Pale Ale is like my go-to style. It's actually my second least favorite style. Right. IPA being obviously number still one. number one. You, Though you it's, do not it's, like hops. It's, it's growing on me. Right. But it's still, not, it's still bottom. But this is really good. I really like this a lot. So wait, why is Pale Ale your go-to style? Because it's the second most hoppiest style. On my palate. But why we is it your go to? You said go to. It's not my go to. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said it's your go to, and I'm like, it's not my go to. I'm like, but then you just said you don't like them. It is not my go to. Right. I feel like I'd rather this drink cider every episode. Weeks. Every time we get somebody on, Mike's like, oh, well, you know, I don't really care for your beers, but I like your beer. Listen, uh, listen. <laughs> okay. Jeff. Gauntlet throwdown. <laughs> listen, Jeff. I don't really like beer at all, but I think this one's a good one. <laughs> listen, Jeff. I still think they're simple yet complex. All right, so leave me alone about <laughs> it. Simple and complex. It's just it's just funny because every so far we've done like IPAs and Belgian episodes only, and they're like <laughs> neither yeah. they're like neither of our favorite neither styles. Right. Right. But I actually I, but told, I, I like IPAs. I told Ryan I'm like I like it. I just don't like oranges. Yep. And I still gave it a, an eight an eight something an eight five or whatever. You for guys you are the one on your knees about it. All right. Fruit de la Terre for what Fruit de la Terre by uh, Red Oh, yeah, yeah. It's good. I just I don't like, I just like oranges. I still gave it an 8.5 out of 10. That's a good score. 
Jeff, you're Jeff, understanding Jeff, my the... dick about it. God damn. <laughs> Every fucking episode, you're giving me shit. Oh, what's up? The house is here. Hey. Hi, Darren. Hi. Jeff, his mic's not on. I just turned it on. Um, you can't fool me. I know. Yeah, this is the... Uh, <laughs> Homebrew, New England style IPA from Ooh. one of the guys at the bottom. Ta- right. yeah, talking to the mic. They're early, bro. June 25th. This is uh, this is oh, a homebrew. Are those the guys with the uh, the coolers? Yes. Oh, okay. From now on, they have to do it's a bo- one bottle tax. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, one bottle. Tax. Yeah, they have to give the bar a bottle. So what what is? The, can you explain tax. this one again? It's an uh, English I, style IPA. It's a, no, it's a. Oh. What did I say? <laughs> you said it. <laughs> an English style IPA. You said an English style no, IPA. I said, I said, uh, he looks like Jeff to bail him out. What I'd say? I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'd say. Jeff it's has an no IPA. Fucking... It's, pretty, it's pretty tasty. It's actually easy drinking. Yeah, it's really easy um, drinking. I like it. I don't want to leave the bar too long with Cooper by himself. So I hear you, man. Do you know how what the ABV is? No, I do not. You gotta ask some of them. Yeah. I'll jump back. In I feel like second. it's low. Bye, guys. I feel this, like it this... tastes like it's like five and a half. Yeah. Which like I don't. Okay, so let's. We have somebody here who's in the industry. Who is new beer is a session beer. Who actually knows his what, shit, right? What is actually yeah. session? Because, like, if you put out an IPA that's 5%, that to me is a session IPA. Because an IPA should be 7%, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Or at least 65 I mean, I, I would say that, like, BJCP, and don't quote me on this at all, but, like, I, I think that BJCP are probably from, like, like I think it's 5, 5, 6 to maybe even into 8 can still be an IPA. If we're going just on ABV, yeah, um, there is a larger range for that, and I feel like with uh, like the revolution of IPAs, that is also right you know, change things. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I might be just talking out of my ass. I feel but. like, and, and let's uh, hopefully <laughs> somebody <laughs> listens <laughs> and is like, this guy makes sense, but probably not because it's me. Facts. But how about <laughs> if your beer has less alcohol than Bud Light, it's session. I don't five I four or less. I don't know about that. I, I, think, don't, I, I don't think, think the market should be. A I bar. think it's about if if it's under five percent, it's technically classified as sessionable. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would say in, in my eyes, maybe five I would and say a half. Like five and a half, right? Is is what I would probably say for a session beer. Not nothing more than maybe not even five and a half. Maybe well, like it depends who person who's session. I can drink like one eight percent beer and I'm fucked up. So I, my I session that, would be two. That I know that sessions, yeah, yeah, yeah. sessions, I feel like are usually in that four range, like four zero to four nine, and yeah, maybe that's, in like five two, yeah. like that. But lower, closer to that Bud Light mark, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, well, that what is a natty? Sass, that's the not in, not in natty. flavor or the natty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not in flavor, obviously. We're not saying right, that no, session no, no, beers are Bud Light. Strictly alcohol, percentage. but in alcohol percent. Yeah. I think it's I think it's five percent, but I'm sure we'll be corrected. So I heard I heard a story. Um, the other day about session beers and uh because i was talking about oatsmobile oddly enough and uh (laughs) this guy goes yeah session beers came from england because in england you would go out to your buddies go to the pub or go go out to the pub with your buddies there we go and uh and everyone would buy around basically and if you're going out with eight of your buddies you would have to have low abv beers you know because after eight rounds you're gonna be fucking wasted if you're right. drinking you know two if you had if you had eight two hearted you wouldn't you'd be rolling out of the place right. you know what i mean so session i feel like if you can have you know five to eight of them during one drinking session and still not be like falling on the ground i feel like you're you're there not a beer that exists that i could do that with literally no no beer that exists Schaffer Hoffer is like 2%. Well, what's your timeline like and are I you could, hanging out of the pub for an hour or are you see, hanging I drink out for like fast, 5 hours i drink fast Usually, yeah. And you would say your rate of consumption. Well, also, two, you're, at you're least, with a bunch of at least other people two that to are three buying, buying rounds, too. So. I'm like two to three full beers in an hour. I think that's fair. That's probably excessive. Uh, I, that, I mean, I told you, I'm, I'm going well, into so AA, I, I, so I, I, I'm, I'm about to quit the game. I got to go into listen, AA. Listen, dude, you're yeah. drinking three beers again. Drunk off three beers does not qualify for AA, Jeff. Yeah, I no, just, I, yeah, I'm just like a lightweight. I don't know what you're happened. Right, if you you need to be an AA if you were trying to drink like like three barley wines in an hour every day like that's that was your drinking style was like because you're charging to get you know pretty fucked up like you know what's wild about that it's like i was in germany uh in munich and there these businessmen go and get like 30 ounce beer steins of 12 percent strong lagers at lunch and like legitimately and dude i i went and like in the beer like there's like uh i forget what they're called they're not beer garden i mean there are beer gardens obviously in germany but it's not it's like uh 
it's like a courtyard where there's multiple bars the around them. Room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you go into them, and like at floor level, well, at like down there's always basements and then there's like a second floor and yeah. all the bar areas have like a bar on top and then a, a ground level and then there's like a basement bar and like the basement bars were like working class like high like high energy a lot of music like fun take shots kind of bars yeah. then like ground level was all business class bars and they're like super like new york style nice glass were hanging well yeah. lit so at lunch if you're walking through and you go to any of those bars there's just businessmen crushing big ass beers on their lunch break. That's awesome. And it's like so normal for them that not not one person looks like they're like I shouldn't be doing this. Like Right. Right. Exactly. And then if you go upstairs, it's like all gay bars. Yeah. Which we made that mistake. That's we got the progression. We got pizza that, at a that gay is bar. every German bar. Munich at least. Munich. But yeah, we went upstairs to like two bars back to back. They both happen to be gay. And we're like, "Okay, the upstairs bars are gay. We shouldn't go there." Got it. Figures, Jeff. Yeah. Figures. We got pizza at one though. They were very nice to us. They liked us. Crazy shit happens on the upper floors, like that's, in yeah. Key West, the Garden of Eden. Oh my God! I've been there. I've been that's there. That's just that's like. Let me, let me tell you, Key West. <laughs> let me tell you. No, I, all right. Let me tell you about this, and I wish that. I could make this shit up. This is the God's honest my experience at Garden of Eden. Okay. Go up there, spring break, three friends. We're like, this will be this will be fun. We're all gonna go up there. Saying. We had like one girl with us who were like, oh yeah, we get to see her boobs. This is gonna be cool. Yes. <laughs> so like, we all go up there. Um, my sister, dude. So we, you know, we we follow the rules. We take our we take our pants off. We walk over to the bar. We're like, Wait, oh, this you is did fun. it? Yeah, you got okay. to. I've done man. it too. You, you got oh, it. You I've never do done. You got to own it. No. You've been there though. So we go. I've been there, oh, you should. You need to drop so, trial. You have so we to go there, it. right? And I swear to God, I turn around and there's a dude reading a book naked on a lawn chair. <laughs> Eating a fucking hot dog, and I can't make this shit up. I can't make this shit up. And I'm like, do you guys have? Food? I'm like, do you guys have food here? They're like, no. And I'm like, where'd this dude get a fucking hot dog? He brought his own hot dog and, and a book. Like, he got a all the dog? things you can eat. Right? <laughs> that was my thought too. Like a was like a fucking item. wiener. <laughs> like he's eating. He's eating a wiener. That's. And then out of nowhere, Pants Adam, go back uh, on and I leave. Out of, yeah. <laughs> out of no so, pockets, and then he pulled out a corn dog. Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> so then we just we took our shots. We were like, we did it, guys. Let's get to the fuck out of here. There's uh, there's two women there, and it was the one that we brought, and then one older woman there's who was like that one older woman, one old yeah. old ass woman who's just letting it all hang out. And we're like, uh, good, good for, for her. her. I yeah, respect right. you. <laughs> That's the one thing we all say. Man, good for her. her. You know what? You gotta own that, man. Right? You there was like a stand up there's like a stand up comedian who's like any woman that's like bigger or older, if they like show their show their skin, it's like, wow, good for them. But if you're like skinny <laughs> you're and hot, it's like poor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a whore, can't believe that. What a bitch. I think Flaunting it's her shit like a whore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forget what comedian Scary. it was. Hey, what's up, like, Granny? Good for you. <laughs> yeah, it was like I forget what comedian is like. He's like, I wonder what woman's out there like. Oh, so like, what's your workout goals? And she's like, Well, you know, right now I'm working. I'm I'm inspirational, but I'm working on being a whore. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time for for a break. Any I last I, any last words? I, on, I got on a bells. pretty good Garden of Eden story. If I can, I oh. can push that in there, dude. All right, let's take a break, and then you'll tell it, and that could be like a like an ad bonus at the end. Uh, bonus. It's a little nugget. All right, any any last last words on bells? Yeah. I like this Oatsmobile. I like it a lot. Cool. Yeah. I are, actually are you, do. Are, are you doing ratings and stuff anymore? Uh, we we, we could. I mean, I would no? give it. I'd give it a nine point one. For yeah, for I style, think. for style. It hit, I mean, a it's hard to. Pale it's like hard, it's hard like to compare because yeah. what do you compare? The, what other session pails exist? Like I'm rec- going to go off personal preference. This is a nine one for me. This is really good. I'm really impressed. Nice. Really and that's a guy who does it. That this is his go-to, but not go-to style. It's, it's my not go-to, go-to. Not go-to. Not go-to. Not go-to. Not go-to. I will give it. Like I will give it an eight eight. Bitch. It's uh, it hits <laughs> it hits style. It hits style, and it's it's. I I almost I. It's a it's a I mean okay. it's an okay. eight eight. It's, it's a B plus. Yeah, that's a B plus beer. There's I'll nothing wrong with it. it. It's I'm good. Just kidding. Super floral. <laughs> Super floral. I like the nose. I like the body. Yeah. I like the malt finish. It's everything it's that good. you said it was. Yep. Cool. So that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's a it's a good one. It's our number three priority right now behind yep. Two Arden and Oberon. I'm so. just gonna say it. So the second half we're going. <laughs> I don't even know how to lead into us. So I, there's an article on Pace Magazine about the top ten, <laughs> the top ten breweries to visit when you're in Florida. None are in Key West, but. So I want to ask the table, we go around, and as a group, we could come up with our top 10 
in no particular order, breweries that we all must visit. You, if you're visiting Florida, ones you got to visit, right? But I'm setting some guidelines, okay. just like Jeff would. Those uh, rules. Me? I make guidelines? Yeah, you make a lot of rules. Yeah, no more beer shots. Rule number one. More beers. We each get three picks. Decent can contribute to. And the, but there has to be one brewery that we all agree on to equal out to, to ten. To ten. To ten. That right. would be more than ten. Right, but things happen, Jeff. This is, our, this, this is what is happens when we just, let, yeah, we just let people come on. We got we to adapt. So Deason is here, is joining us. Uh, second rule, uh, one of the other rules is they have to be an actual brewery, not a garage brewer, not, they can't contract space. They have to be a brick and mortar building with an address, stuff like that. And the last rule is you can't talk about Fight Club. No Fight Club. No ah. Fight Club. Done. So, well, we give everyone time to think of their three. I got my shit. I'm ready. ready. Let's go into the group brewery, the one we all agree on, that if you're visiting Florida, this brewery, we all agree on that. You have to fucking visit. Funky Buddha. That was mine. Uh, I will go along with that, but I was going to say Cigar City is right up there. That brew pub is fun as shit. I feel like that's it's either one or the other. You know what? Probably Cigar City, actually. I think Funky Buddha's beers are better now, and I think their reputation's better. The but atmosphere's the, better at Funky the, Buddha, though. The, uh, the Cigar City tour is better, and I their facility's the cool. They have a really a great tour. They have a really good tour, and the experience of going there is a lot more full. Yeah. So I know I've been Cigar over City. there, been to the tap room and, and everything a, a few times, so, but I've never been on the tour there. So I don't know if that I would highly, kind of I would, takes, I would takes me out of that, but... I would suggest going. It's... it's I mean, as much as we know about beer, it's still a fun tour. Yeah, yeah. I mean, lot and you of, learn something new. I mean, you're, you're hearing it from the source, too. Like. Well, so when we, I mean, so not to go too far, but when we did the last Cigar City tour, the jokes that were made about AB InBev and trying to buy him and Joy sticking, you know, the sticker on the door, and it was hilarious. Now, being bought by Oscar Blues, it's not so funny, but whatever. I, I think... Funky Buddha has better beers. I agree. But I think Cigar City has more of a variety of beers. Agreed. But, I mean, so that makes really sense with kind of their, their their kind of vision. I mean, when you walk into Funky Buddha, you see, you know, all, like the Willy Wonka thing right on the wall. So, like, they, they definitely have, like, that push towards, you know, the food style yeah. uh, of, of beers and whatnot. So, it's got two different... Monkey Buddha attacking it. does have like hidden dicks on the walls. Like in their artwork, there's like hidden penises just like in their bottles. This so, guy. Like, this guy. Yeah. It's a fun game to play if you visit the brewery. Dick, <laughs> dick, 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 dick. How many dicks is that? I don't know. A lot. <laughs> a lot of dicks. I don't know. I, I just feel like Funky Buddha has all their beers are. You have a better chance of getting something really good because all their beers there are like pretty legit. Oh, they put Compared out. Compared to Cigar game. City, has does have a couple stinkers. Fart in a glass. Yeah. The uh, cucumber saison. <laughs> I was gonna say cucumber saison. They're smart enough to not put fart, that on though. Just fart in a glass. But then again, like, are you really gonna try every single beer Cigar City has on tap? Yes. I'll say this though. And, well, you're and a, you're a, I'm a an man alcoholic. Man. You're, you're a man man. <laughs> I know. You say that there's more variety of beers at Cigar City, but every time I've been to Cigar City, they have at least, you know, seven taps that aren't theirs with stuff that's regularly available where Funky Buddha has always all their own beers and they're all pretty awesome. But that's is Cigar saying. City trying to, I mean, do they have more beers to put on and they're just kind of recognizing some good talent kind of thing and that's why they have, they, they're showcasing them at the... That's the way I saw I don't, it. I don't know what guest taps they have there or whatever. So. I mean, occasionally they have like cool collaboration taps that are yeah. rare, but sometimes they have like regular ass shit on there like i don't know but one I mean, time there was like the thing too is like it's cool. porter was on there one time yeah i mean if you're if i feel like if they're recognizing good beer by putting stuff like that on that's pretty cool oh, i didn't realize this would be so much of a debate i thought we'd all say pretty much funky buddha <laughs> my yeah. i'm gonna you know i'm I mean, gonna i'm gonna change i'm gonna go to cigar city because i think the tour is worth it and the tour is actually really awesome i feel like i can't 
I was gonna say Cigar City. I can't. I, I feel like I haven't been on the tour at Cigar City, so I'm kind of at a. It's. A, I mean, it's a tour. Like. Yeah, I know. You crack a couple I jokes. You try beer that. on different stages, and then that's you know. You drink. You drink four beers during the tour. Yeah, that part's cool. And they take you through the entire facility, every aspect of brewing. They show you the freaking scientists, like literally while they're working. Nice. Well, that's. I mean, that's nothing. Like I got that flying dog in Maryland. Like it's not. It's a cool tour. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I'm, it's good, it's I mean, I'm like, not saying it's, it's not, a bad tour, but it doesn't make them any more special. And I mean, brewery tours for the most part is going to be that. I think like what you guys are talking about, having the stories and shit within the tour. They did have you good know, stories. Learning the, what the, like the soul or the culture of the the actual brewery is is kind of an aspect. Well, of yeah, it. like that Hellas story I told earlier yeah. was from a tour. Yeah. Like I was, that was a story they told us. We were in the original brew room, the original like brewery facility, which is now just an auxiliary room that they yeah. use for tours. And the guy was like, we were standing right here. It was 117 degrees in here, and that's when they came up with Hotter Than Hellas. And it's, I like, mean, cool. If the table says Cigar City, I'm cool with that, but let it be known that Ooh. I did. I, I like I like Funky Buddha better. But if if I'm the one man out. They're both going to be on the list of ten breweries that well, we have to go to. So. Uh, of course. But I think, personally, that Funky Buddha... Is is every beer they make is is phenomenal? Mm. I haven't had one. So is it below brewery, average beer? Are we talking about brewery experience? Or are we talking about the beers? whole experience? The whole like if you're having to decide if you're flying into Florida and you're like, all right, should I fly into Tampa and go to Cigar City or should I fly into Fort Lauderdale, Miami, whatever, and go to Funky Buddha? Oh, if that was the decision making, I would go to Funky Buddha. I would you're go visiting. To Funky, you're visiting Florida. I would go to Funky Buddha. I mean, if. if if I'm going to one place in Florida, I'm going in, I'm going to spend a couple days there, I'm getting out. Funky Buddha, the atmosphere, that southeast Florida, you can't really beat it. I mean, that's, We're talking about one specific bird. If yeah, you had to choose between flying into Tampa and going to Cigar City or flying into Fort Lauderdale, Miami and going to Funky Buddha. I'd have to say... Both some, are making the list for sure. Right, but absolutely. We're, we're talking about a, a table decision here. I, mean, I would pick Funky Buddha. But you're just experiencing the brewery in the place that it's at, or are you spending like a day, like you're going to go to? It's going to be the like a, essentially couple... like a, a full afternoon. You're going to go there and spend a couple hours there. All right, but we're there. just talking about the brewery. Like you're not going to go to the beach afterwards. And no, no, just, 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 just a brewery. Just a brewery. Get fucked up. Uh, I would have to go with Funky Buddha on that one. Okay. Yeah. I feel like the uh, like all the games and stuff that they got yeah. going on, the atmosphere, like that changed quickly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Once See, we put it into perspective on. If but you're I, but going for one day and picking a place, which would you rather go to? Funky Buddha. But that's the thing is like if you were, but if I have a whole day of going to breweries and all this other stuff, then you got to pick Cigar City because you got. You well, got that's the so location thing, Tampa, right? I agree with you, know you know on that. Mean? But if you're going in for a business meeting, you have the meeting in the morning, you have the afternoon free, and then you're leaving out the first thing the next day or that night. Which uh, brewery would you go to? Funky Cigar Buddha. City at that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I, I, I would, I would have a long session and like party and play games and stuff like that, you know, at, at Funky Buddha. But if I had to fly out at night, then I would go to Cigar City because I think that that might be a, a better choice. We're still torn. All right. So <laughs> torn. No, I have torn. three Funkies and one Cigar City. So fuck you, Alki. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that took right. longer than expected. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So we're each picking three. Yeah, our own personal three. Personal and it can't three. be either the two that we talked about. And we can't be one that we just mentioned. We, we can can't each rename. do two now because we came up with two. Well, no, it was a majority. Uh, I'm just the asshole. We so. can do two. You know right. what I mean? We can do two. Yeah. Table decided Cigar City and Funky Buddha. All right, Funky Buddha, Cigar City, right. and then yeah. so we're each doing two breweries. All right. So mm -hmm. I'll let whoever who wants to go first. I would not like to go first. Decent, go first. You're the guest. You're the newest guest. Guest, guest. No one is going to like this choice. Jeff's already choosing Persimmon Hollow, he told me already. Same somewhere. <laughs> okay. I respect that. All right. So we went there. It's in a business park. The man's got two gigantic spaces right next to each other, knocked out the walls. <clears throat> it's a small, small tour. I mean, it's like a 100-step tour. What? The guy that owns it, the guy that brews it, he is the one giving you the tour. Plus, he gives you a shitload of alcohol. Doesn't but hurt. the bonus is, and I verified this with him, I had always heard a story that on bottling day, that if you come and help and bring your own soda keg, he'll fill your soda keg. That's fair. Really? I was like, is that okay. a true story? He's like, absolutely. 
Because if you're part of our email list, we tell you the days that we're doing our bottling. You show up, we'll fill your soda keg. I think that's pretty that's fair. Legit, that's yeah. a lot of labor because they only use bombers. So yeah, yeah, and they and only do sours, keg, correct? Yeah. I believe they, <laughs> like, they only do uh, sours. Artisanal no. styles, you stuff. could say. Sa- I mean, it's some straight up saison stuff. Okay. I would say dominantly. So, and I, I know a lot of people don't like Saint somewhere, but the tour was pretty, pretty cool. Right. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you get to see what a small brewery is doing, you know, because he's only doing one batch at a time. Yeah. He, yeah. He physically does not have space or the equipment. I hear good too. things about him. I just haven't. It's hard for me to buy a bomber, and and drink it by myself. Right. So just a lot. I like that That's a lot. A lot of beer. Well, that's that's where alcoholism comes into play, and that, there's or nothing like wrong with friends, that. Or like friends, like bottle shares. I hear that's a new thing, up and coming. Yeah, yeah. Bottle shares. I like bottle shares. All right, I, I just heard about them. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's where you go with bottles and you share them. All right, Alki, you're up. Um, What's your first one? Brewery that you have to go to. If you're visiting Florida, what would you recommend? Or I really I appreciate Due South. I've been there. Uh, I've been there a bit. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I wanted Mike that to get it. That was That's my number one. Yeah. Uh, I I really I, I like what they do. I like their style. I like what they got going on. Um. Yeah. Again, I, I think that anything that creates an atmosphere of like hanging out and like neighborhood bar kind of thing like they got cornhole and jenga and stuff in their warehouse space like the staff there is pretty cool yeah it's very like it's in like industrial and stuff like that so alki's a big cornhole fan what's yeah, up he loves cornhole no, Jeff big, we, big we cornhole fan he loves cornhole. Love cornhole i'm from the north bro <laughs> he's cornhole and everyone i don't know about all that but all right jeff me yep so I'll I have you south. I have one that I think you might take, but I'm gonna leave it because somebody no, just bro, took your it. other one. Say it. So my my second one uh, that is equally awesome and you need to go to is Two Henrys because is that the one you're gonna take? Yeah. That was your next one. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Two. Yeah, it's okay. Two Henrys. Their tap room's <laughs> awesome. They're also sorry. key and curly wine. So Why they're so their tap room is divided. Yeah. You walk in and there's a bar on either side. One is the winery and one is the beers. And then they also have an outside patio bar with a, a huge venue and it's all in the in the vineyard. So it's like there's grapes and different fruits and things growing out there. Um, and you're you got this like retention pond lake thing with a big fountain in it and it all like the atmosphere is amazing. They have a huge stage, a hundred percent a venue space that they definitely have done weddings at, I'm sure, because it's beautiful and um, really cool to set up the way it's set up and everything. It's a great place. The beers are all quality too. They do awesome stuff. A great Russian Imperial style, uh, jalapeno, blueberry, wheat beer. They have all kinds of good stuff. And, and definitely, if you stop in, it's just a really cool spot to go and you'll enjoy yourself. That's what I've heard. And like the view and everything like that, like yeah. the whole place is like beautiful. Real and nice. the opposite of industrial, you're literally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And you drive in, there's just one building with a blue roof sticking up, and you're like, whoop, I guess that's it. This is probably it. And it's <laughs> it's really cool. Because they're around all the blueberry fields and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah blueberry, go, strawberries, blueberries, uh, yeah. wine, uh, grapes, I mean, everything. And that's really cool that they can pride themselves on like having that kind of ingredient, that they grow themselves and make such an integral part of, yep. of, of that. So. Yeah. So my first one now that Due South and Two Henders were taken, I'm kind of fumbling around, but I got one. Rap Brewing. That was the next one I was going to say. Seminole, Florida. For one reason and one reason only is their chocolate peanut butter stout. Best. Top five best beer I've ever had in my entire life. Ooh. They're a German-style brewery, so they have a lot of German-inspired lagers and Crystal Weizens and so on and so awesome. forth. Two uh, but, two medalist beers. They had a yeah. gold medal and a bronze medal beer on tap when I was there as well. Yeah. Nice. They're award winning, very underrated because they don't they don't hit distro, but uh, rap R A P P. They're tiny. They're very small. I brought very a small. growler of their chocolate peanut butter stout here and let everybody try it, and we had like three people who are diehard Sweet Baby Jesus fans. All of which said that their chocolate peanut butter stout is better than Sweet Baby Jesus. So, yeah. it's it's an incredible beer, and all I mean, all their beers are good. They also at Rap they do cool stuff because they have like a four flight, a four flight, a six flight, nine flight, and twelve flight, and you can get like a paddle with twelve beer shots. That sounds and heavy. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. That sounds like a teamwork effort. Twelve is like almost their entire tap lineup. I think they have nineteen or twenty beers. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, it's and pretty awesome. they have a variety. 
everything's you're not getting five IPAs, you're not getting four pale ales. You're Are getting, they a new brewery? No, they've been around for a while. Okay. Yeah, they're just yeah. really small they're and really haven't small. hit distribution yet. But they won awards at Hunapu Day. They won like two awards for what they were pouring oh, off. Oh, really? At for that? Day. Yeah, they're, they're good. Dude. They're awesome. They're good. Nice. All right, so Decent, what's your what's your last brewery? Copper Tail. All right. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. coming up a lot. Yeah. They're coming up fast. So a few of us went out to Tampa. Uh, saw saw the Red Wings Bolts game first. Uh, or no, it was prior to the playoffs. But anyway. We went out and got shit faced oh the next day, and a big part of that was Copper Tail. Okay. And you walk in; it's very unassuming. It's a large building, but very unassuming. There's some outside seating. You walk inside; it's dark, and they've got a, a chalkboard twenty feet high of yeah. friggin' beers. But the nice thing is, is behind the bar, instead of a big mirror, it's a window into the brewery, and it's massive you can see the whole entire space which yeah. is fucking awesome and like you see the, the barrels that they got as well as like the huge ass system it, it is work on. so cool now I'll, admittedly There's two stories of seating yep. too i saw while i was there yep yeah. admittedly didn't take a tour because i was more interested in drinking as many things as they had on the train right. menu face. Right. yep and i think we got there late but uh it is it was just cool as hell to see all that it, it's amazing that they invested so much right off the bat, yeah. which is really impressive. I think that's like, the way to go overall. about it. Just you spend all that money up front, get the space, get the equipment in, and just kind of work your way to filling all that space. Kind of like what Red Cypher said. Yeah, I, yeah, mean, I was going to call them an honorable mention. Right. Nobody mentioned them. But. Because yeah. I, I had never heard of Copper Tail until we had a Copper Tail night here. Their beers are good. And they were freaking solid. And I just respect the hell out of the fact that they're doing Belgian styles because, you know, that's what I do. I mean, yeah, Belgians are just fantastic. But theirs is just solid. How would you describe Belgians? The, make sure you get, Simple, un- yeah, make sure you get under the tip. <laughs> Don't forget the bottom either. Yeah, mind the stepchildren. All right, Alki. What are Alki we really talking about right now? Um, my other one... I, I've always had like a soft spot for intuition. I, 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 I I'm about I'm about a man. Okay. I, I really do. Like, I was hoping someone would say something. Say it's them, like yeah. it's this beautiful little cave that just produces some top notch beers. Okay. If I we don't get them here in Orlando yet, I, I don't think. Where, they do, where around are they located? Orlando, huh? I've never seen located? them here. They're out of Jack's Beach. Jack's Beach, okay. Um, but I know certain o- outer parts of Orlando get them. Like Lake County gets them. Who Villages get them. Intuition. Intuition. And, uh, oh, I've heard only awesome things. I don't think I've ever had one of their beers. Like John Boat, I, I-, I absolutely That's love good. it. It's yeah. a very, very yep. just drinkable they beer. They do the uh, I-10 IPA. I-10 is yeah. fantastic. Sounds like they do go to Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. I'm down, dude. There's so many good breweries in Jacksonville. And... Yeah, so I mean, I'm down with that one, but like you walk in, everything's like enclosed, and you know, there's some windows and whatnot, more games, which obviously I, I like. You have to have games if you're gonna be right. my favorite brewery. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and they just they have all their own beers on tap, but they usually have like 30 different beers, my which, God. Is, right which is awesome. Right. And, and a lot of them are really, really good. But again, with the flight thing, trying to get all those at one time into a flight, like it's it's pretty daunting, but it's also very impressive. So, yeah. yeah. All, All right, right, Jeff. I'm curious to see what you're going to say. It's going to be completely out of left field. For um, Hollow. Civil Society in Abacoa in Jupiter, Florida. All right. I just I've went there been. recently. I've never okay. heard. They're brand new. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Very new. They just got to Hunapu Day for their first year this year. They have great beers. Uh, there's a buzz around them already a little bit, but they have really great beers, quality stuff. And Abacoa is a great area. Um really like young professional a lot of apartments it's where the jupiter hammerheads play or where yeah. the marlins and uh who is it it's the marlins and somebody else spring train there so it's like a sports community inside jupiter okay but it's all young professionals uh downtown strip with the cool bars they do like a food truck night every month where there's hundreds of food trucks that come in line the whole downtown Damn. area and uh it's it's such a cool part of town and they're right in the middle of it and putting out really good beer and I, I I've been impressed I've had three of their beers only but I've been impressed with all three of them a lot of people like civil societies yeah civil it's a new society. craze now mm-hmm. what learning something new every day so I was torn between Ardwolf which hasn't been mentioned oh. which I was waiting to see what you'd hasn't say been mentioned. it has not, has not That's been a mentioned good one. yes which is why I was surprised you said civil oh. which is fine it's your opinion I like Ardwolf 
And then, but I never had Ardwolf, so it would be just on hype, which I can't do. That's not fair. So, and it's not Bowiegans, Jeff. You can relax. Though they would would have been number three. <laughs> MIA out of Doral, Florida, would probably would be my my second pick. They're Miami Weiss. Amaze balls. Amaze balls. The Orlando was good. Miami Vice number one hit show. <laughs> <laughs> but I would be MIA. I would it's say good MIA. that you came yeah, in, in summer. Yeah, in they're, winter, they're, it's very depressing. They're great. <laughs> he's drunk. No, no it's he's not drunk. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> Movie's funny. I was right. about to say MIA. Uh, there, there's a lot of hype around them. Their beers are good. We just got them in Orlando. Our last two episodes ago, we had them. They were all they were all really great. Yeah. Um, not to be confused with Miami Beer Company, not so good. But MIA. MIA. I, I heard that, that that mistake had been made. Confused yeah. Every time we said them. every yeah, you, I, I'm like I think we only said it a couple of times, but anyway, every time we mentioned the beer, we said MIA. Like, and it was not. It was, my, it, it was Miami. It was Miami. And it was not a good it, that coconut blonde was not a good beer, but no. So I would say MIA. Cool. So but honorable I, mentions honorable would be because the brewery Ardwolf. is good at itself. Yeah, I, I mean I've had a lot by them now. I'm at the reps too, and they're like they're super cool. Yeah, I hear uh, a lot like of good things. Too. All the beers I've had from them has been has been awesome. Yeah. So uh, What's up, I really want to say Ardwolf, but I haven't had any of their beers. It's, it would just been off hype. That's true. That's true. Um, I, I I've gone to Ardwolf a couple times, uh, and it it I is definitely good stuff. Head. I was like, and so. their whole like thing, that they're not moving super fast on anything either. So. Yeah. So they just I mean, make good beer. yeah. So yes. you want to do you want to do honorable mentions? Yeah. So honorable mentions. Uh, you covered Ardwolf already, so I'm gonna call my boys Red Cypress, of course. Of course. Because they're awesome. Okay. I was there Sunday. I had a good time. Don't remember much, but the robust porter that, that is makes fucking a good time, so. Then. I love the robust porter a and lot. And I love Death Roll. I get crushed. No, I love, yeah, yeah. I did, had that too. Did you get in an argument about that saison being a sour? No, no. There I didn't. No argument. I didn't, I didn't order it. No. Saisons are sour. I, I had the trapped in space. It wasn't bad. It's not trapped just, in space is good. I just had. I love it. And I had the the soldier soldier, soldier of fortune. It was good. Oh, I hadn't had that one yet. I, I just really like the robust porter and the death roll a lot. Death roll so, is the shit. It's good. Death roll is hands down right now my favorite like sessionable stout like yeah. if i'm gonna drink multiple stouts in it, it, i love stouts so if i'm gonna drink multiple stouts in a sitting it's gonna be death roll because it's right. just so good i was gonna say red cypress i mean I, okay uh, they I, I think they deserve it i mean the hype i mean they deserve it in right. multiple honorable mentions right uh angry chair yeah I, I really like everything that they're doing i went there and then they don't have they didn't have hours on their door it was just like they opened at this time and then they Close. Close open like whenever, closes whenever. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was kind of upset that I didn't get to go in and see everything, but it looked like a small ass building. But Tiny. everything that I've yeah. had by them, and as well as what people say, is, yeah. is, has been very good. They're so. uh, the maple one that, or not maple, we just had one on that was, uh, and it's like a the hazelnut. The, yeah, the, the hazelnut fion. coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking unbelievable. For and sure. I've had. I had their maple uh, German chocolate cake and their German chocolate cake, and both of them were incredible. So, really? I, oh my god, oh, sweet! I don't even eat chocolate, and I thought they were like the best fucking beer. Like they're so good. That's good. So no. my my honorable mentions one is is there's two of them Green Room and Jack's Beach, very good. I've heard very good things very about good. them. Very good. And then the second one is surprisingly Three Daughters. Yeah, Three because Daughters. Because they have concerts there. They have a huge stage with a, like a light system and like a. They have concerts there, but talk about games. They have them all. Let's talk That's games. That's what I've heard. They have like That's what I've heard. adult size Jenga. They have adult size like Connect Four. You have to pick up the pieces with like two hands and put them in the slots and ping pong. Pool, I can build like. all that shit. Twister? They have Twister. They do. Yeah. Really? You yeah. know who wow. should get that Twister? That whole warehouse, the brew house, has all the brewing equipment and nothing but games. Yeah. That's how and, and their brewery the, only the beers are way like better than their distro beers. Way better. You know so. who else should get Twister? Garden of Eden. That would be raw. That Garden would be. And if you win, Twister. if you win, you get a hot dog. You get a hot dog. 
There's one awkward naked dude on the cart, like cooking his own hot dogs for no, people with no our bun, hot dogs just out. The hot dog. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And he hands it to you with his bare hand. No, no tongs. No right? tongs. Yeah. We touch wieners with our hands here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And don't wash it after. No way. Can Can we do a quick segue? Sure, do it. So we've we've named the breweries, but if you were gonna go to one specific area of Florida, ah, oh, I like it. For ooh, ooh. two days. Two days. Oh. I'll answer I think that. It, I'll I answer think that it comes right down now. to three places: it's either Jacksonville, Tampa, or South Florida. South, yeah, it's called Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Yeah, Miami, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. all kind of the same shit. Where, where would you go? I would go South Florida, hands down. No question. I mean, I mean, it's got the atmosphere and it's got a shitload yeah, of breweries. Yeah, just, really good breweries down there. I think South Florida is the new, the prize of craft beer in Florida. Really? Ooh. Yeah. I I'll agree. That I is agree. A, bold a bold statement. I agree. You have Funky Buddha, Due South, um, people like Saltwater, MIA. Saltwater. Yep. Um, Concrete Beach or Concrete whatever. Jay the Wakefield. Jay Wakefield, yeah. Winwood. 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 There's so many oh, good breweries I'll, down there. Honorable mention of Winwood as well. <laughs> There's like a lot of great yeah. breweries down in South Florida. Civil Society. Yeah. My I mean, boy, Tampa, 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 I've heard really good things about Alamorada Beer Company. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Tampa is like, they're all kind of convenient. They're all kind of there. But I think in terms of bang for your buck quality, I think it's South Florida. Yeah. So, I mean... Moms, Are we doing it? 2001. I mean, it, it, I mean, that was the our, strip club factors in over there. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. In Miami. Well, dope, Jeff too, only though. goes to gay bars. So. I would, I third, would third go floor. to oh, the Tom, yeah. the Tom third, third floor oh, right. gay bars. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I would go to, uh, I'd go to Jacksonville um, because that's the that's the other of the three that we mentioned that I haven't experienced everything of already. So I've I would have there to go twice. there. Yeah, I'd, it's solid. I'd love to go to like Pinglehead, Green Room, Ardwell. Engine 15. Engine 15 really good, yeah. So Plus, like all those ones not overpriced there. like Miami. Mm-hmm. Miami's you're right, ridiculous. You're right, you're right. I just, you're right. I just, I kind of just feel like, was. like that city is not like my favorite city, but. Jax? Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, but. I mean, but I would have fun experiencing at. all the good I mean, beer. Jack's Beach beer. has like four yeah. breweries within like 10 minutes of each other. Yeah. You got Green Room, Engine 15, uh, Zeta, and... Yep. Yeah, Zeta, uh, dude. Where'd they come from? I feel like they've been like we hitting went it there, hard. I think they I focus there too much on a, being a restaurant. They have a, a lot of food promo. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of food promo. But their beers were good. Were, good, were food good, and, yeah, uh, good food. Yeah, I've had great location. I went there uh, when they were fir- when they were brewing like their first batches and whatnot. So I was only able to try their stuff when I went back again. But wasn't yeah, awful. I think I mean I think that that would be where I'd go because I'd like to try all of the places that I haven't been to and tried yet. Because like South Florida, pretty much all of those that I mentioned, not all of them, but a lot of them I've already been to and, right. and experienced their beers, and they're more in market. Like a lot of the Jacksonville places aren't in market. In Orlando. I mean, you have Bolt City. You could always go there. Bolt City's up yeah. there. Yeah. Anyway, that's where <laughs> I would go. I thought it'd be a good segue. <laughs> where would you great go? Segue. You said uh, South Florida, decent? No, he started talking about strip clubs. I think Uh-oh. he's leaning towards Tampa. No, actually, yeah, I'd probably go down to South Florida. Yeah. Go fishing. You party in the city where the heat is on, like Will yeah. Smith? No, I'm not spending 12 bucks for a Bud Light because that's all they got in a shitty bar. No, I'm going fishing. In between hitting bars. There you go. All right. I'd probably do South Florida. I like I like do, I like do South and all that stuff. Well, I I've been there already. That's the only reason I didn't but say South there. Florida. I mean, I could. Yeah, I haven't spent so much time in Tampa. But there's so there's a lot of good stuff coming out of so Tampa much, too. so and much. And St. Pete, like going down for a cycle Psych, and stuff like yeah, that. I think there's just so many in Tampa that's just overwhelming. Like, where are you gonna go? Like, you have two days. Where like, well, you do St. Pete one day, and you do like Greater Tampa area. Uh, I guess you got to go but north of St. Pete like, to get to Rap. You're spending an hour at a brewery if you want to hit half of them tops. I mean, if you make it all the way up to Rap, you have to go to Paradise and you have to go to uh, Big Storm, and neither of them really blow me away. So I would, you know, I, 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 I hear, I hear uh, Big Storm's uh, brewery only beers are le- really legit. Really? Yep. They were. I was five minutes away from them and I didn't go. Well, I mean, Angry Chair is right down the road from uh, Cigar yeah. City. Angry Chair. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Angry Chair is not that far from Cigar City. I'm talking Uber and, you know, yeah. I'm yeah, not it's driving close shit. By. That's close by. Yeah. Plus, the whole vibe, I think, like in Tampa, you, you got a lot of, like, one-off kind of things, like being yeah. in Ebor and stuff. Like, the action that happens there is, is pretty cool, too. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, I mean, they have like Seventh Son as well, and some smaller ones that are like doing. Good I wasn't sold on Seventh Son. I went to Seventh Son. I didn't really I like impressed. it, but I've heard good things. Of I, I, I like okay. them a lot. And I Dunedin, like Sours, Dunedin's supposed to be really good too. Street. Yeah, yeah, Dunedin's Dunedin's pretty good too. Out, I, nah, I was whole hum about Dunedin too. I'm meh. Yeah, I went to Mad Beach in uh, Madeira on John's Pass. Mad yep. Beach. I went to. Seven Sun, and then I went to Dunedin, and Mad Beach was by far my favorite one. Yeah, but if you go to I'm Tampa, you get to stop halfway and go to Two Henrys and get drunk first. That's wasn't the, I was meeting Preston. That wasn't the plan. What's up, Preston? But anyway, Jeff. Is he here? Jeff. Here. Where? where? <laughs> Not yeah. yet. He will be soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Who sponsored the show, Jeff? Yeah. I don't know. Who sponsored the show? The Homebrew Fest, man. Homebrew. Bro, I've pitched a thing like 100,000 times. You can really episode. dive into it, though. All right. I'm, I'm about episode. to be a participant in that. All right, so well, we talk about wait, that don't fucking come. Jeff doesn't and, want and you to They're come. not sponsoring the show. The show's sponsoring that. Ooh, or yeah. vice versa. T- tickets on Eventbrite, by the way. Just just go ahead and cut all this out and do ask me that question again. Okay. I'm going to leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, tell us who sponsored the episode. Uh, the Wab UCF Homebrew Festival on June 25th, as we've said in about 50 episodes. And counting. Um, gonna be awesome. Last count, twenty-three home brewers. Alki, you're in it, right? I am. Yeah. I am. Twenty-three yeah. and full, by the way. And uh-huh. full, full, yeah, full. yeah. I keep, I keep getting uh, people asking me about that. Unfortunately, we are full. Um, However, the- tickets are available on Eventbrite, <laughs> and one of our ticket holders is here. He's yep. one of the people who have already bought it. Buy them quick because uh, we have our sponsors about to start advertising this stuff, and when they do, they're gonna sell out really fast. So. Get them before they're gone. Um, we have once we're out, we're out. We're, we're not gonna. We can't do any more solids. There's, there's no. not a, there's, yeah. yeah, there's not enough room to, to make any yep. exceptions to that. And uh, we have, we have the Brewers Association came on board as well as wow. the Sunshine Challenge, and the Brewers Association is going to be sending it out to 3,000 members in the Central Florida area. So, you know, get your tickets before so that this happens. This is really blown up. It, we it will not got, have three thousand tickets. It got so much <laughs> bigger than I anticipated, like That's awesome, so fast. But it just shows how like awesome that event was, like that people got that excited about it. But yeah, that's come out. It's gonna be fun. Lots of brewers. Um, we're gonna have a band out. Actually, we're gonna do some live music and everything. So it's gonna be a really good time. How much is it? Twenty dollars a ticket. Sorry, twenty dollars uh, on event right. Uh, what band is coming out? Uh, we don't know yet. We're still in negotiations. All right. To but N-A, to be we're determined. thinking, uh, we're thinking and leaning Metallica. towards we're going to do something like uh, tropical, kind of like ska, reggae style, okay. something fun, upbeat. We do mini uh, Metallica. Mini Kiss. Yeah, mini Kiss. Mini That's not true, though. They're not coming. No, we're not doing that. Is there a mini Jimmy, mini Jimmy Buffett? And Whoa. part of this episode. Oh, my God, Jimmy Buffett. That no, is mi- so no, good. That is mini really Jimmy good. Buffett. Part of this episode has been sponsored by Oats. Oatsmobile. 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 Bell's, Bell's Oatsmobile. Oatsmobile. Bell's Oatsmobile. Oatsmobile. Available in package stores and Available at Wob. In 25, soon to be 30 states. So I want to thank yep. Mr. Alki for bringing the beers on. They're thank very you. good. Thank Man. you. Turkey. Thank you for joining us. It's been it's been a blasty blast. It's been awesome. This is really fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoy like it. I, a like lot. I kind of want to come back again. For well, you're sure. always welcome. Oh, well, thank you. Thank because you. Because I, I know it. you've got more stories than, than just the garden. I got that lot, garden eating story in, was good. I've been yeah. I've been in the service industry for a little while, and you know, tra- <laughs> drinking habits tend to produce really gnarly, yeah, they do. gnarly Maybe stories. Maybe next yeah, time we talk do. about your Christmas tree topper. I don't think that that can make it into <laughs> this. <laughs> should not should not be on air. <laughs> yeah. That'll uh, we'll talk about that sometime. Yeah. Ball gags and ball busters. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Jason. The There's half. the name yeah, of this yeah, episode: a, Ball gags yeah, and ball, ball busters. busters. <laughs> a walkthrough with Bell's Brewery. <laughs> <laughs> or, or things that things that are mythical, like the clitoris. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm totally gonna call this hot dog. <laughs> Just, yeah. <laughs> Hot dog again, session. <laughs> again, thanks again for listening and watching. And until next week, we'll see you at the bar. <laughs>